focused and fearless. Here's everything you need to know as you jumpstart your day. I'm Pauline Verzosa. TV host Willie Revillame joined the senatorial race just minutes before the filing period ended yesterday. The Will to Win host filed his certificate of candidacy as an independent candidate. Revillame said he wanted to help more people, particularly senior citizens. Aside from Revillame, another surprise senatorial candidate is Kingdom of Jesus Christ leader Pastor Apollo Kibuloy. His lawyer filed his certificate of candidacy on his behalf since he is detained for facing multiple charges, including child abuse. Hindi ako abogado, hindi ako nakatapos, pero ang purpose dapat ng bawat senador, mabuting puso ang meron ka. Gusto niya maging part ng solusyon ng ating bansa. Ang focus po niya, bakit siya tumakbo? Dahil sa Diyos at sa Pilipinas nating mahal. And it's settled once and for all. Former President Rodrigo Duterte is running for Davao City Mayor. This after unconfirmed reports circulated that he is gunning for a senatorial seat. This also means that the Dutertes will rekindle its rivalry with the Nograles clan in the local elections. Ria Fernandez with that report. It's like the 1990s all over again for the Duterte Nograles families of Davao City. An old political rivalry is rekindled as Carlo Nograles, former cabinet secretary to then President Rodrigo Duterte, challenges his ex boss for Davao mayorship. Nograles resigned just yesterday as civil service commission chief after a two year stint, even though he still had five years on the clock. After he filed his COC, Nograles said he wants to give the people of Davao a choice. This is for the people of Davao. This is for uh, the people to have a choice. This is for the people to have a chance. Makapili man lang sila. Nograles is running alongside 1st District Councilor Bernie Alag, who's going head-to-head -head with Digong's Vice Mayor candidate and son, Baste Duterte. Carlos' sister, PBA Partilist Representative Margarita Migs Nograles, will also be challenging another Duterte. This time, Davao City 1st District re-electionist Congressman Paulo Orpulong. Is she ready for this battle? Personally, ako handa na po ako dito after one term as PBA Partners Representative. Nag-ikot-ikot naman ako. Uh, nakita nyo naman and uh, I'm ready to take on this uh, new role. On the same day, the Nograles siblings announced their run. Came news that Digong Duterte is quitting the mayoralty race and is instead running for senator. The rumor circulated for several hours on the last day of COC filing. Kasi marami ng balita na nakakarating sa akin na nag-withdraw siya bilang kandidato para mayor. Even former presidential chief legal counsel Sal Panelo's denial of the report did not kill the story at once. Hindi siya magpapahit in the first place. He will remain as candidate for mayorship sa Davao. And when 5 p.m. came and went on Tuesday without the Duterte Patriarch withdrawing his COC for mayor or submitting his candidacy for senator, that's the only time it became clear. He really is just running for mayor of Davao. But former Senator Laila de Lima for one was not amused. Napaka-typical of him, no? Ganyan talaga ang style niya, ng lilito, ng gugulo, ng loloko. Ano ba talaga? Ano ba talaga ang pakay niya? After today, substitutions due to a candidate withdrawing will not be allowed. The only acceptable grounds will be if a candidate were to die or be disqualified, in which case the substitute must share the same family name or belong to the same party. For News 5, Ria Fernandez, We Are One News. And Davao City mayoral candidate Carlo Nograles shares his reaction to false news that former President Duterte was supposed to back out of the local race. Here's an excerpt from his interview on StoryCon. From your perspective, how did you react when you, I'm sure you heard about it, how did you react when you heard about it? Uh, was it something that you, you gave credence to or was it something that, that you looked at with, with disbelief? I found out about the news report after I had filed my certificate of candidacy and uh, pagkatapos ako may interview ng media. Mm -hmm. So when I was already, um, as I was leaving Comelec, 
Um, somebody told me, and then I checked my phone, and then I saw my news reports. But later on, may nakita rin ako ng news report na sinasabi na fake news daw at mm-hmm. hindi Not naman daw true. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> sabi ko nga when I was filing sa Comelec, wala namang kaming nakita na anyone withdrawing anyone's candidacy that time. Kaya um. I didn't know where the news was coming from, but definitely doon sa Comelec Davao, wala naman po nangyaring ganyan. Yes, sir. Pero yung initial reaction, ano yung inyong naramdaman? Well, true or not, uh, ano yung parang, uh, uh, parang pagkatama sa inyo? <laughs> um, or, or, ako naman, Ed, I'm filing as mayor of Davao City to, to give Davao a chance, no? to give Davao a choice. So, yun po yung reason why I filed. And um, ang... <laughs> Ang mabuti dito sa pag-file ko, at least now Davao City has a chance to choose this time around, this coming election. Uh, Secretary, Pero ito mo yung alas, hindi ba, hindi ba mabigat din sa loob nyo? You still had five years in the Civil Service Commission yes. and you have a lot of room to implement reforms, hindi ba? Malaking pangangailangan ng bureaucracy natin eh. Hindi ba din kayo nang hinayang why, doon? Yes, that's why it was a very, very difficult decision for me to make. Um, hard for me to leave the CSC kasi marami na tayong nasimulan and I know yes. that we could bring CSC to greater heights. Uh, we had just approved a uh, a proposal to uh, get funding for uh, CSC to get the project para magkaroon na ng high-tech na mm. HR management information system for the entire bureaucracy. And that's supposed to happen next year. But I'm confident as I leave the CSE, I'm confident that we put the building blocks in place to bring the CSE to greater heights. And I'm confident that the people there, as I know them all, Latma directors, assistant commissioners, all of the uh, members of the CSE family, um, I know that they can do this. Let's now take a quick look at today's other headlines. In the Philippine Star, President Bongbong Marcos is in Laos for the 44th and 45th ASEAN summits. In his speech, the chief executive vowed to push for a rules-based international order and a peaceful resolution of disputes. And in business world, the unemployment rate in the Philippines eased to 4% in August. This translated to 2 million unemployed Filipinos, down by 305,000 from July and by 149,000 from a year earlier. Over 50 aspiring senators filed their certificates of candidacy on the last day of filing period. 57 senators have submitted their COCs, while 53 party lists filed their certificates of nomination or certificates of acceptance of nomination or CONCAN yesterday. In total, the COMELEC has received 184 COCs for senators and 190 CONCANs for party lists. This is not the final number of senatorial candidates, though, as the COMELEC aims to resolve cases of nuisance candidates on or before November 30. Political strategist Alan Herman shares his assessment of the list of aspiring candidates for the 2025 polls. And here's an excerpt from his interview on The Big Story. We're talking about mothers and daughters, fathers, fathers and, and sons, sons husbands in-laws, and wives. husbands and wives, grandchildren and the, grandparents. The in-laws are, politi- are, are, are particularly um, This entire clans and people's family members swapping places. Is this, uh, is this the norm? Has right. this always been like this? Or this is the most, this election is going to see the most number of uh, dynastic families? Well, there's a wonderful um, phrase for that. You, you all know, I'm sure, what an orca is. An orca, mm-hmm. the shark, right? Mm-hmm. So Killer that's actually whale, O-R-C-A, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of... Um, in terms of candidates, it's really that by, by number. So mm. it's the old familiars, the O, mm. and then the R is the relatives, uh, the C are the celebrities, mm. and the A are the alternatives. So the most that will come back in any given election are the O's. So the there's old always going to be orcas mm. in every Yeah, election. and then the relatives are next, and then the celebrities, and then the alternatives. <laughs> oh, 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 is, oh, is what? That is such poor the penmanship. O, oh, is what? Yes. <laughs> Oh, is the um, oldies. Old familiars, Old yes. familiars, I see. So, yeah. so in all your years of political consulting... Decades. I mean, in all your decades <laughs> yes. of that, 
uh, this doesn't surprise you. This, um, isn't, this is not the most number of uh, political dynasties you've seen. Absolutely not. Um, it doesn't surprise me, uh, taken at face value. I'm actually, sur the level of surprise for me now comes at the, maybe hubris is a good word. Mm -hmm. See, I'm able to use big words on this program. <laughs> usually speaking in straight Philippine or they're, they're giving me grief for, uh, for, not, for using my Arneo um, um, English. <laughs> but uh, the, it's the hubris that surprises me for this election because like you said, um, previously, we have this thing called order of attribute preferences in, in, um, in our discipline. It's almost psychographics, mm. uh, where, where in, um, when you look at the social engineering data, uh, voters don't, especially on the local level, they will not vote for families mm. on the same ticket. Mm. Uh, in previous elections, that was actually pronounced. Mm -hmm. So if it's a sister and a sister, a mother and a daughter running for a local um, elective position at the same time in the same ticket, uh, they usually don't win, or one of them doesn't make it. But this elections, wow, the mm. dam, the dam has burst. Mm. Uh, we've got um, entire clans mm. running, as Miss mm. Sean said. So what you're saying, Alan? Let, let me just interject. Is that okay? Dynastic politics is nothing new, but this year's filing, the level, is extra. Mm. Yes, the, extra, extra. The concentration of the mm. of these so-called um, fat dynasties or uh, these dynasties. Um, um, what, what do you think contributed to that? Bakit Did it shock you? Nila uh, okay. Um, yes, I was shocked at the level. Mm -hmm. um, I think what contributed to that, if I'm being very honest, is uh, number one, it's the power dynamic um, happening at the very top, which mm -hmm. is um, mm -hmm. the Marcuses versus the Duterte's mm -hmm. uh, fighting it out. And if you're looking for quality time within budget, well, with Signal Load 175, you can watch One News, free-to-air channels, must-watch shows, movies, and many more for 30 days. So what are you waiting for? Get the Signal Load 175 now via Maya or Gcash. And those are the top stories of the hour. Join us later at 9 a.m. as we continue to monitor the day's biggest stories. I'm Pauline Verzosa. We are One News.